Hi everyone, I'm Vinod and welcome to Career Bold. Today's conversation is going to be around the topic of IIT toppers. And we will, across five videos, examine where the IIT toppers have been over the past many decades. So the first video is going to cover the IIT toppers from the beginning of the JE exam till 1980. 80 to 90 will be the second video, 90 to 2000, the third video and so on. So we'll make five videos on these topics. So let's jump in into the first topic for today. So here is a presentation I created to kind of talk about what were the choices made by the IIT toppers before 1980 and what happened to them, what happened to their careers and what can you learn from it? There's also some interesting historical trends which emerges around the nature of immigration in the US when it opened up and when pe people began to flock to the US. So let's jump, jump in. 1966 was one of the earliest records I could find of uh, the IIT topper list. So Sunil Singhal, who went to IIT Kanpur, was a topper in 1966. So he graduated in 1971 with a degree in chemical engineering. So two things stand out from this conversation. So when you're looking at Sunil's case, it's obvious that IIT Kanpur was among the top IITs during the first two to three decades of the IITs being set up. I think at that time, IITs, the older IITs were in existence, but IIT Kanpur had a tie up with the best of schools in the US like UCLA and MIT. So definitely it was very prominent. And interestingly, computer science was not that famous at that time. So there were not too many career prospects in computer science. A field like chemical engineering, a core field was the number one choice at that time. So again, you see a person who's a topper joining chemical engineering. He was a top rank holder in the JE exam. It says that after graduation, he went to work for India Carbon and ALA Chemicals. He later joined a U.S. company, Major Chemicals. He worked there for many years. I worked in terms of project execution, a bunch of projects. I think because he was traveling across the world, he did make some money at the end of the day. And he, he was a dedicated philanthropist. He, he was able to set up a primary school, give free education to a lot of students. And he was also conferred with the Distinguished Alumnus Award. So that's absolutely fantastic. Let's move on to the other person I had in my list. So 1969 is when there is this person, Rajan Modi, who was the IIT topper. Um, I couldn't find much details, but clearly he passed out in 1974 from IIT Bombay with a degree in electrical engineering. Again, you see that computer science kind of fake, became famous in the 1980s. So before 1980s, more people used to take up non-computer science branches. Here, this person took up electrical engineering. Again, not much details other than that he settled down in New Jersey, in Ridgewood, and um, he looks pretty fit, but looks like uh, he died a couple of years back and uh, in 2017 at the age of 65. Um, but clearly he was based in the US and he was trying to create um, a career out there. He, looking at the write-up here, it says that he went for graduate school in the US in 1973. Um, so clearly it means that um, after finishing his undergrad from IIT Bombay, he went to the US and been in the US since then. So this is among the trends you observe that people around the 1970s onwards begin to come to the US for further studies because there's a lot of scholarships available, a lot of academic opportunities available. But you see that off late, this trend has kind of reversed. So I remember that 20, 30 years back, around 80% to 90% of students at say universities like IIT Madras used to just flock to the US, but it's reversed completely off late. So barely, 10% of people nowadays go to the US for further studies, 10 to 20% of the IITs. Most of them tend to stick around in India and work in India, which I think is a fantastic opportunity for India to tap the specialties and skills of the students coming out of the IITs. 1973, the topper was a very famous person called Narendra Karmarkar. He's very renowned in the field of mathematics. The Karmarkar's algorithm is named after him. So in terms of linear programming, He's one of the topmost pioneers in that space. So he has an interesting background. He went to IIT Bombay. So again, you can see the trend that uh, the toppers at that time used to go to either IIT Kanpur or IIT Bombay. After that, he went to Caltech for doing his master's and his PhD. And he went to Berkeley to do his PhD. Caltech is near Los Angeles and Berkeley is near Northern San Jose, near San Francisco. So again, you can see that he was pretty much based in the California region after he graduated from IIT Bombay. He worked as a software engineer for a couple of years. Um, after finishing his master's, he worked as 
a software engineer in American Microsystems for a year before he went on to do his PhD from Berkeley. And he finished that in two years, which I think is absolutely fantastic, which shows that this person is top notch in terms of what he was doing. It's so impossible to get your PhD done in less than three years, but Narendra Karmakar managed to make it happen. He was also postdoc during his time of his PhD degree. He worked at AD and Bell Labs for 14 years, from 1983 to 1997. He was at the Institute of Advanced Study at Princeton, which is very famous as a place where Albert Einstein also went to be at the last two, three decades of his life. So very famous for housing Albert Einstein, uh, the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton. He was at the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research as a professor. So which is again really great because it speaks to the fact that there were a couple of people who wanted to come back to India create a career in India. And since then, he has been a scientific advisor to the chairman of the Tata group. Uh, I believe he was part of a group which set up uh, supercomputers in India. So the Tata was involved. The Tata group was involved in setting up a supercomputer in India. And Narendra Karmakar was leading a lot of their efforts. He was also the principal scientific advisor to the government of India for a year. And uh, again, looks like he's pretty much retired right now. But then he was pretty much in the space of um, supercomputing for a long, long time. So 1979 is one more interesting person, Joy Thomas. Um, so Joy Thomas, again, died recently. Um, and I had the fortunate capacity of working with the Joy Thomas Foundation. And that's kind of how I got involved with the Pan IIT Association in the Bay Area. And Joy Thomas was a very interesting person. He was an absolute superstar during his time at IIT. So he was a topper in the IITs. Um, he went to IIT Madras because he was a Kerala probably IIT Madras made a lot of sense to him for doing its undergrad. And he studied computer science topper during his um, undergrad program. There's an interesting story that um, even before he applied to Stanford University, um, what happened is uh, one of the seniors was already studying at Stanford, talked to one of the professors, and this professor basically told Joy that, hey, you have an offer for a PhD program at Stanford even before Joy even applied to Stanford University. So that's how bright and intelligent he was. Every professor wants to scoop up the best possible students coming out of the IITs. And Joy was an exemplary person, not just in terms of academics, but in terms of anybody I've been in touch with. Everybody has like extraordinarily great things to talk about Joy Thomas. And I've, I met his family. I met a bunch of people working with him. Uh, a lot of very senior people working in the Silicon Valley Bay Area. And all of them, no joy. He was a great person, a great pillar for the Indian community in the Silicon Valley. And he was a person who would call people during Christmas, bake for them and just be a very relaxed uh, person, very down to earth. And that's what stood out about him more than his academic credentials. He just stood out as a person who people really respected and valued and looked upon as a friend. So I was there for uh, the launch of the Joy Thomas Foundation last year. And uh, I saw that the CEOs of companies like Zoho, of IBM, um, the head of IBM is Arvind Krishna, and he was a year junior to Joy Thomas when he joined IBM. And he looked up to Joy to understand how to work in IBM. So again, very exemplary person. Uh, he was working as a data, he founded a bunch of companies, and he was working as a data scientist, senior data scientist at Google, when unfortunately, um, uh, he had a health problem and then he um, he died in September 2020 which is really unfortunate but again just an exemplary person and again an example of person even if, that means that even if you're a topper it doesn't mean that you are not down to earth and you're pretty much in touch with the people around you so that was joy 1980 was an interesting time again the person uh, Pandur Pandurang Nayak was very close to Joy Thomas again he knew him very well uh, he was a topper during 1980 if you look at his career, he did his undergrad in computer science from IIT Bombay. So clearly you see that 1979, 1980 is a trend towards doing computer science because that is opening up with a lot of opportunities in the US. So Pandurang Nayak went out to do his PhD in computer science at Stanford University, just like Joy Thomas. And uh, since then he has worked in uh, NASA, he has worked in Stratify. Uh, Stratify was also a place where Joy Thomas worked. He was also a CTO out there. So again, Pandurang worked in uh, Stratify. He's right now working at Google. And from what I hear, he's looking up Google search. He hits Google search. So earlier there was uh, an IIT alumnus who from, from one of the IITs was looking after Google search. He created that from scratch. And uh, after he left Google and went on to Uber, 
Uh, what happened is then Pandurang Naik, I believe, took over and was looking after Google search. Again, a top-notch person in terms of solid academic credentials. So this is still 1980. I'm going to talk about 1981 to 1990 in uh, another video, and I'll upload that very soon. Meanwhile, if you have questions um, or interesting thoughts about what I've been talking about, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to hear what you liked and do subscribe and click, click the bell button if you want to hear more of such videos. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.